that you tuned in. We can't wait to hang with you this week and every week after this on Sundays. Um, with me, I have Josh Cameron and Timber. Uh, Cameron and Timber are representing us from the Bloomington campus. Whoa. We are going to play the Hot Wings Challenge, where the boys will each eat a hot wing from Buffalo Wild Wings. I think it's their hottest sauce. Blazing. And then I'll ask them a question and they have to answer them. Hopefully as time goes on, it'll be harder for them to answer questions. All right, let's see wing one. Wing one, top. <laughs> so I thought I'd start off easy. How do you handle <laughs> spicy food? I hiccup like crazy. <laughs> I love spicy food. I ate three ghost peppers in five minutes one time. I usually hand, handle with two hands. Um, that's usually how I handle spicy food with my, with my hands. Whew. On to wing number two? Wing number yeah, two. Yeah, wing number two. Wait. What has been your favorite place that you've traveled to and why? Uh, I went to Greece on a mission trip. Mm. Um, so it was great just seeing the country, but also helping the refugees out that were there. <sighs> okay. I'm getting, I'm getting through. Um, the second wing was not not kind. What is your favorite thing about serving with students? Whew. All right, the heat's starting to hit me. All right, all right. Um, seeing them grow. Oh. For me, I think it's the energy. Like, mm. students, you guys bring so much energy, and I love vibing off of that, where we're just like, yo, we're about to play some games. And you guys are like, yeah. And I'm just like, oh, let's go, because adults don't do that like that. All right, wing number four. Yeah, wing number four. How are you guys feeling? Okay. Good. I'm about halfway through four right now. Oh. oh, okay. All right. So question number four. What is the first place you are going to visit after quarantine? Kobe. I'm hitting that sushi buffet. Mm. <laughs> Josh looks so I'll sad. Oh. Um. <laughs> One for five, halfway through. All right. Do you have a secret talent? Well, can I tell you if it's a secret? This is where we expose the secret talent. All right. All right. My secret talent is that uh, I can carve erasers in the various shapes and letters and make stamps and stuff. No one really knows. Mm. <laughs> I'm going I in. have 11 wings over here. I was supposed to have 10. Then, then they gave you an extra. You should be thankful. And I, my eyes are teary right now. <laughs> I got I'm, six. I'm in the middle of seven right now. What? Okay. Oh. Out of us. All right. I need they you to four. name five books of the Bible, but you can't say the Gospels. Ah, oh, ah, ah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Revelation. <laughs> Revelations, <laughs> Ephesians, Thessalonians, oh, first Thessalonians, the first Right, I want you to name five state capitals. What? Is Springfield the state capital? Uh -huh. All right, yes. Springfield. I got Indianapolis. Mm. Oh, um, uh, wait. <coughs> I think Austin, Texas is the state capital. Right, ready? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, Savannah, just five between the, <laughs> yeah, five between the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what we're looking for. Savannah, Georgia. Mm. All right, so that's four. Albany, New York. Okay. We got five. Yeah, I just finished eight off. I'm going on to nine, guys. What is your greatest fear? Heights. I hate birds. Birds? Like, um, birds. Like the reptiles and insects. Yeah, you gotta be careful. You don't want to get that sauce in your eyes. Open a vine. Next question. Let's go. Okay, who would play you in a movie? I've been told that Adam Scott. Oh, I don't think so. Do some Parks and Rec. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I'm not sure I feel that way. I would go Macklemore. Oh, I don't see that. Look like them. Uh, so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Kanye. The last week is the hardest. Yeah, uh, Josh, I'm surprised you didn't pick uh, Toby McGuire. Oh yeah, Toby. I'll prove it to everyone. Uh, 
All right, well, 10 wins down, on to the last one here. Okay, I have a good last one. (laughs) That's how I feel right now. That's just true mood. (laughs) True mood. All right, so something that's common on the YouTube show of the Hot Ones Challenge is he has them explain an Instagram post. So before this, I went and creeped on all of your guys' Instagram (laughs) And I picked a post that I want you to explain. Cameron, explain this post. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what happened was I had just gotten my uh, first real big boy job at Bob Evans. <laughs> and I wanted everyone to know how hyped I was. Actually, that's not even true. I would just realize the background. Basically, I was at a Denny's. There was a <laughs> bunch, of, bunch of catch-ups on our table from, like, the people before. And I was like, you got to document this. <laughs> not hitting me. Um, and so this is what this is. This is me documenting how my love for ketchup and all the catch they left for us. Josh, explain this. Um, oh, throwback to CIY Believe for all you peeps. CIY. That was our bus. We were the black bus. And for the last night at the hangout at the big gym, all the high schoolers remember this, where you play dodgeball and stuff. It was like the leaders were supposed to dress. Actually, everyone in the USA. And so I repped America there. And if like, I'm right, this is you yeah, off to the side here. Yep. <laughs> pretty great. Awesome. And last but not least, Timber. Yeah. So I believe that was my uh, first college cross country meet that we had just got done with and so uh there was only four of us that were on the team at the time and so uh we wanted to celebrate with a group photo nice yeah we made it Woo! We did it can we drink the milk five, guys <laughs> i don't want to drink my milk i feel too sick Ta-da! <laughs> Yeah, comment on the side. Who handled it the best and who handled it the worst? I think I might have handled it the worst, surprisingly. I think Timber handled it the best. He went one extra wing. Yeah.
death could not hold you the veil tore before you you silenced the boast of sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no Start singing together. Sing, don't lose heart. Oh, don't lose heart. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Don't give up. There is hope. There is always hope. Sing, there is peace. And there is peace in the storm. In the storm. And no, don't forget. He is the Lord. God who saves, one who is strong and mighty, freedom is in his name, so open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise, there is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory, so lift your eyes, stand in awe, stand in awe, oh there is one, only one, that my help comes from oh left to rise left to rise oh say there is the king of glory there is the god who saves one who is strong and mighty freedom is in his name so open the gates of heaven lift up a shout of praise there is a lion roaring Jesus, the King of glory.
Nations bow, mountains shake at the sound of just one name. Over all, Jesus reigns. I know. See, nations bow. Oh, nations bow, mountains shake at the sound of just one name. Over all, Jesus reigns. I know, yeah. Sing this out. There's a king. There is the king of glory. There is the God who saves. One who is strong and mighty. Freedom is in his name. So open the gates of heaven. Lift up a shout of praise. There is a lion roaring. Jesus, the king of glory. students hope you guys are enjoying the service so far and tonight we're going to jump right into the teaching but first I want to tell you something called the bystander effect and with the bystander effect is this psychological condition that says when there is a crisis or there is a victim and you see that person that you are less likely to help that situation if you're in a larger crowd all right, because the assumption is, is that you think someone else is going to help. Now, I've, I've kind of illustrated this for you right here. I know, like great art skills, just great artists. I know, you don't have to say that. I already know you're saying that right now. Um, but I've illustrated this for you. So let's say there's this situation where this guy is beaten up and he's crying for help. If you were the only person there, you are more likely to help in that situation than let's say there's a crowd of people around. And that is because you assume that, oh, Someone else is definitely going to help that person, so I don't need to do that. That's called the bystander effect. Now, maybe this plays out in a different way, so I kind of illustrated this. But let's say you and your family are driving, and you look on the side of the road, and there's this car that's pulled over. His, his hood is smoking, and he's on the phone, obviously calling for help. And you decide, oh, I'm just going to drive on by, because someone behind me is definitely going to stop and help them. It doesn't have to be me. That's the condition in our brains that's called the bystander effect. Now, this plays itself out in a number of different ways. Let's say you're in your cafeteria and you see a piece of garbage on the floor and you decide not to pick it up because, oh, the janitor is going to get that or someone else is going to get that. Or maybe a friend or s some student drops their books all over the floor and you decide, well, I don't need to get that because someone else is going to help with that. This even probably plays itself out in the classroom Let's say you're in class and you're in a bigger class and the teacher asks a question and you decide, I'm not going to answer that, even if you maybe know the answer, because obviously someone else is going to answer it. But what happens in that situation, right? There's this long, awkward silence because nobody is answering the question. And now the teacher is staring at everyone with this awkward kind of smile. And now you're playing this game where you have to avoid eye contact. And none of this would have happened if you had just answered the question in the first place. Maybe... In a day like today, you went to the kitchen and you saw a sink full of dishes and you decided, well, I'm not going to clean those because mom's going to get that. No, that's a bad idea, especially on a day like today. If you're doing that on Mother's Day, that's like multiplied by 10. Mom should never have to do the dishes on Mother's Day. Moms, if you're watching, you're probably giving an amen there. But the bystander effect can simply mean this, that we see a problem and we, we choose not to respond because we think, oh, I don't have to get that. But I want to put it another way. 
what if this situation means we see or think of a chance to love someone and we choose not to because we think someone else will or I don't have to do that. You guys heard this morning about the story of the Good Samaritan. And if you weren't there, Mike explained this story of Jesus having this conversation with a lawyer. And this lawyer says, who is my neighbor? And Jesus, before this, has just confirmed what the greatest commandment is, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So the lawyer asks, well, who is my neighbor? And Jesus responds with this story, as he often does, that where there's this guy that's been beaten up by these robbers and he's lying on the side of the road, almost dead. And what happens? A priest walks by and a Levite walks by. Both of these would have been religious leaders and they both walk right on by this guy that's hurting on the side of the road. But the guy that stops is a Samaritan, which by the way, they didn't like Samaritans. So they would have heard this story and they're like, that's ridiculous. Why would a Samaritan, the bad guy, be stopping on the side of the road? But this Samaritan doesn't just stop and help this guy up. No, he, he bandages him. He puts him on his donkey. He takes him to the inn. He stays with him. And then he gives the innkeeper money and says, pay for all the medical expenses. And if it's more than what I gave you, then I'll repay it. This was a ridiculous kind of love. You see, the dangerous thing about the bystander effect is that it prevents something. The bystander effect prevents relationship. You see, in this story, the priest and the Levite, by passing up this situation, and I don't know what their excuse was. It may have been like the bystander effect, and they assume that, oh, someone else is going to stop and help this person. They may have even assumed, well, this guy's dead. There's no reason helping him now. Whatever the reason may be, by not stopping, they prevent and stop a chance of showing this ridiculous kind of love because it would have been ridiculous. Priests and Levites, they were told not to go anywhere near unclean things. And this guy on the side of the road would have been unclean. So it would have been ridiculous for them to stop. But they miss this chance to show relationship. And you see, when we offer a relationship with, with people, when we offer a ridiculous kind of love, we're offering a relationship, not just with us, but potentially a relationship with someone else. I hope you see where I'm getting at here. When we show a ridiculous love, we're not just offering a relationship with us, we're offering a relationship with Jesus. That's why Jesus says the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. What do all of those things point to? They point to a relationship. You see, following Jesus, it isn't about following a bunch of rules. This, this isn't a bunch of rules that Jesus is saying here. He's not saying that the rule is you have to act like the Samaritan. But what he is saying is that Jesus longs for us to have a relationship with him. And through that relationship with Jesus, to have relationship with others, to have relationship with our neighbors. So it's not necessarily about who is my neighbor, which the lawyer was asking, but how do I love my neighbor? Because when you love your neighbor, you offer a relationship with them. You see, guys, the bystander effect comes into effect and comes into play in a lot of ways in our life. We say, I don't, I don't need to help them. I don't need to love them. Someone else will. And, th and the truth is, guys, you don't have to. It's not a law. It's not a rule. It's not a requirement. But if you have a relationship with Jesus and understand how much Jesus went through to have that relationship with you, I just don't think it's possible to not consider having relationships and to loving other people. Because based on this story, guys, what Jesus says is some people may not love other people well, may not have that relationship. Some people may pass on by. Your neighbor right now are the people that you have connections with in your life that you know might need some help. And I know there are people in your life right now that you know might need some help. And you have a chance to offer a relationship. It could be a family member right now. 
And one of the best things you can do is to love them well through things like helping with the dishes or walking the dog or cleaning the house. That's a ridiculous love. It could be a friend. Guys, right now is a really difficult time. And there are people right now that are struggling. They're sad, they're lonely, they're confused, they're anxious. I've had days where I just am not having it. It's just been bad. This hasn't been fun. One of the best things you can do is to reach out to the people in your life and ask them how they're doing. Write a letter, FaceTime, bake them some cookies. Just let them know you're thinking about them. That's ridiculous love. It could even be actually one of your neighbors who are maybe struggling right now. It could be an elderly couple that just needs help mowing the lawn right now. Maybe bake some more cookies. It's a ridiculous kind of love. Guys, the bystander effect is dangerous because it gives us an excuse not to love the people around us. It says, oh, someone else will get that. And to be honest, this coronavirus, this COVID-19, it's, it's bad and it's scary, but it is also kind of an excuse not to love people because we think, oh, I'm just stuck inside. I can't go be physically with people, so I can't actually love them well. But let me suggest that the people that come to mind, and there are people that will come to mind that you think of that need to be loved right now, those people are just for you to love. There are people in your life right now that other people can't have relationship with, but you have this unique opportunity to show them a ridiculous love and to offer this relationship because ultimately what that relationship points to is the greatest act of love, the greatest way to show relationship of all time. Guys, we love because Jesus first loved us and he wants a relationship with you. Now we're gonna take it on over to Matt who's gonna explain just how great that love is. Hey, thanks, Zach. I tell you what, that was about as smooth of a video transition as you can get. So thanks for, uh, thanks for that. I hope you're having a good night tonight. I really do. Uh, personally, I hope you celebrated your mom a little bit today. Maybe you did. Happy Mother's Day's mom. Maybe we got some of them watching us here tonight. You just heard Zach just give you a great message about what it looks like to serve other people. And this morning, like Zach said, you heard Mike, hopefully you heard Mike talking about what it looks like to serve others and the importance of that and how that looks. And that is so good. I'm so glad you're still with us tonight. I hope you're using the chat feature that we have going to talk through this message and all through the night, connecting with your friends. But what I want to look at to close up tonight and how this is going to end with this message is the why to the what. Okay, so Zach talked a little bit just about a focus of what it looks like to serve people and how that's going to be in our lives, especially during this crazy time of COVID-19 and what it looks like to, to be a servant to those that you connect with, that you know, that you love, maybe your neighbors. And what I want to look at is, is not just the what, but, but why, like the why behind it. Why, why do you serve other people? Why is it important for us? to care and love for other people? Why is it important for us to serve at the food pantry at the Bloomington campus? Why is it important for us to do something kind for your neighbors this week? Why? Why do we do that? There are many whys in culture. My cousin recently got back from the Peace Corps, he spent some time in Costa Rica and in Ecuador, and he loved it, and it was great, and it was the time of his life. He's a college student, and he gets back, and he talks to me about all of these things that he was able to do, but he's not a Christian, and he was just focused on serving for serving in the Peace Corps. Now, I'm not knocking the Peace Corps. I'm not saying that, that there aren't Christians in the Peace Corps, but what I'm saying is it's, it's a route that you can go to serve others. There are ways that you can serve others by just signing up to do things online, to help out with local organizations around McLean County. You can travel to other countries and serve people. You can do all of these things, and all of them could just totally be focused on the fact that you want to serve someone else, either for their benefit or for your benefit. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, serving for your own benefit. Do you, do you ever do that? 
Like, do you ever get into the point where you're just like, I'm just going to serve because I need to feel better about myself. I need to really have an Instagram post right now because I saw so-and-so posting about how she was taking groceries to somebody's house, and that would make me look really, really good. Maybe it's one of these things where you want to do a little benevolence marketing for yourself. But, but here's, a, here's a story that came to mind when I thought about the why. In 2013, I was in Santiago, Dominican Republic, and we were serving some people in, in a local community outside of Santiago. And the missionary that was with us, he, he worked down there full time. Some of the other missionaries were down there full time. He's like, do you know why we do what we do? And all of us were like, well, yeah, you're missionaries. And he stopped us. and He's like, no, why we do what we do is because of Christ's love. Because of Christ's love. And I want, I want to read this. He came to this passage in, in 2 Corinthians 5.14. And he says it's Christ's love. Paul talking about this. Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have died to our old life. He said Christ's love controls us. Another version says Christ's love compels us. So, so because of the love of Christ controlling who we are, we serve, we, we love, we care. Because of Christ's love and Christ's sacrifice for us, we sacrifice for others. That, that's the why to what we do. And, and here's the thing. You, you can serve for this reason or that. And I'm not you know, I'm not going to knock you for your desire to serve. It's great. If you want to make the world a better place and, and you want to do all that, then, then hey, go. But, but what I'm saying is I think what's important, if you're a follower of Jesus tonight, okay, if that's what you claim to be, a follower, okay, why are you serving <laughs> Are you serving just for, you know, benevolence marketing and to make yourself feel better? Or, you know, are you doing it because of that? Or are you serving for a chance to show Jesus? That's what's important. That's what's important. At the heart of, of, of Jesus, at the heart of the gospel, at the heart of why we serve others as Christians, is because Christ's love controls us. Christ's love compels us. Christ's love says, go and love others. Go and serve others. And in the midst of all that, communicate Christ's love. Share Christ's love. Be the gospel. Share the gospel. So, so this week, you know, as, as, as we kind of end the sermon portion of our time here, I, I want to encourage you, Christian, okay, I want to encourage you tonight that, that you serve others with a desire to show Jesus, okay? Don't, don't make it about you, okay? Don't make it about what, what you can post or what you can talk about or, or how you can make yourself feel. Make it about showing the love of Jesus because Christ's love controls our actions and what we do. And, and here's the thing. If you don't know that love, if, if you just have been going through and you're just like, Matt, you know, Zach, other people on this, on this live, like, I, I don't know the love of Jesus. I, I want to encourage you tonight, even strike up a conversation on the chat right now and just say, hey, I, I don't know that love. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know. I want you to know Christ came to this earth. He died for your sins. He rose from the grave and he offers you eternal salvation tonight, even through a computer screen even through your phone, even through your iPad. Tonight, Christ's love wants to shower you. All your sin, all your stuff, all your things that you're just like, God can never love me. No, that's not true. Christ's love is, is everything we know as Christians. And if you don't feel loved tonight, if you don't feel cared for, if you don't feel known, I want you to know Jesus wants to change that. He wants to change that. So we've talked a lot about tonight, serving others, caring about others. But will you do it this week with the love of Christ propelling you? Will you do it this week with the love of Christ sending you in a way to care for others? 
Christ's love controlling you and the gospel being spread due to your service. We're going to go and, and have a time of, of prayer. And, and so we're, going to, we're just going to take it over to our next section. Thanks a lot. Hi guys, I'm Kim. I'm one of the high school small group pastors, and we are going to move into a time of prayer. We're going to get our prayer emphasis today um, off of what Matt and Zach shared with us a little bit. So Jesus in Matthew teaches us that it is incredibly important and is a commandment for us to love our neighbors like we love ourselves. So today I want to challenge you to think of someone who you might not even have ever thought of as your neighbor before. Maybe it's somebody that lives close to you, but you hardly ever see. Or maybe it's someone um, that you used to see all the time at school, another student or a teacher that perhaps you didn't know very well, but maybe you haven't seen for a long time. Or maybe it's someone even in your own home that you've always considered a family member, but not necessarily somebody that you need to love as much as you love yourself. So think of that name, and then I want you to, to write it on a piece of paper or a post-it note. I am crazy about post-it notes, so I always recommend those. Maybe find um, a place that you can put that note in your home that you will see often during the day, maybe next to your bed or next to your toothbrush or even next to the pantry, because I know you will see that numerous times a day. And whenever you see that note, use it as a reminder to pray for that person, to pray for them and also to ask God to help you love them in brand new ways. So I want you to think about that and pray for them all week long. We're gonna let Bree close this, this piece out in prayer, but before we do that, I just wanna, wanna remind you that as much as you are praying for that neighbor, we are praying for you. We love you guys. And we miss you guys. All right, like Kim said, I'm Bree, and I will uh, close this out in prayer. Um, God, I just thank you that we can gather again, um, whether it's virtually, um, that we can just get to know you better, um, see familiar faces like Matt and Zach and all the student staff, God. Um, God, as Kim said, I want to think about a person that um, we can really pray for during this time, that we can uh, just really think about how we can um, tell them about you and just really love on them during this time, whether it's they're uh, asking about their mental health or whether it's just... Um, just being a friend to them, God. Um, God, I just thank you that you are you and you are in control, God, that you um, love each and every one of us during this time, whether we're struggling, um, whether we're doubting, God, that you continue to love us and that you um, are with us, God. I pray for these um, students as we continue. Um, to stay at home, God, that you that that you give them um, peace and guidance during this time. That you um, are with them, God. And I just thank you. I thank you that we we're, we're, we were able to worship with you, God. Um, I thank you that you sent your Son to die for us, um, and that we can live um, with you forever. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, hey guys, congratulations, we did it. You were, uh, you were a part of Eastview Students Live for the first time ever tonight, and so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you were challenged and encouraged by what you heard tonight about reaching out and, and praying and loving, maybe finding a way to, to just engage with some neighbors. Um, but I hope, I hope that was fun. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you chatted with some, some staff and each other uh, while the, the service was going on, and I hope that you're excited enough where you'll be back. And I hope you're already thinking, who else can be a part of this next week? And so, so 
you can't hear me. I hope you could hear me because I didn't have my microphone, but now I've got it. So I'm just going to assume I talked loud enough that you heard me. But uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, it, it was fun, I hope. And I am saying this now, hoping that in a few days it's going to be fantastic. But anyway, Ratasha, uh, I'll hand my microphone over if you've got uh, some encouragement for us. Great. Thanks, Rich. <laughs> uh, like Rich said, I'm Ratasha. Um, I am the resident for our high school. Um, and I just want to encourage you guys and challenge you maybe to even take it a step further. So Kim challenges to write down a name or two. Um, but maybe you go a step further. If you have that person's number, maybe you call them or text them, FaceTime, Zoom, and just check in, see how they're doing. Um, if they need anything, maybe they've had a busy week. Maybe they have had a lot of homework or a lot of stresses. Maybe they need some coffee or their favorite snack. Um, so I challenge you just to take it a step further and love them in a ridiculous way. Maybe drop off um, something that they love that would just encourage them. Can I have the microphone? Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, thank you. Um, and so I hope that you guys are already coming up with some names. Yeah, this is cool. I know my microphone is awesome. It looks just like her conscious because she just handed it to me. Um, but I hope that you've got some names. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've got some names. Those are two of my neighbors that I haven't really met much. They've only been here about a year. They live right next door. I actually have a couple of um, young adult sons that are special needs and I don't even know their names, but uh, I'm looking forward to warm weather and seeing them outside. And I've been praying for them. I've actually exchanged some text messages with them. And uh, we're looking for an opportunity to just have some dessert on the driveway or something soon. But I pray that that's a relationship that I will someday get to just tell them about Jesus. They don't already know him. So I hope that, that you guys are doing that. This is an action step. Don't just be thinking about it. Write some names down. Stick it on your mirror in your car, although you're probably not going very many places right now. But um, let's start praying for neighbors right now. And let's see where, where the spirit takes that if we do that. So, Natasha, I'll hand it back to you. Awesome. Thank you. I just realized you can probably see me doing this. That's okay. Oh, no, 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 uh, I can't. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys, we've had so much fun tonight with you and engaging in the chat. Um, we just want to remind you that we're doing this again next week, same time, Sunday night, 7 p.m. If you had a friend who couldn't make it tonight, remember this is going to stay on our YouTube channel. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and then send this link to a friend, let them watch it throughout the week and then invite them back next week at seven to engage in the chat and just watch another incredible sermon. See you if next week, guys. See you guys.